I'm Neil, sometimes called Dr. Neil. Um, it's a good question, who am I apart from a human that lives on planet Earth? Um, that travels the world. I do spend a lot of time traveling. I spend a lot of time helping developers build better software, and that's a lot of what it's about. It's also about helping people work together better. I want to talk about plugging Azure services into mixed reality applications. So I started looking in January, we started looking at putting cognitive services into MR and thinking about what could you do if you had like an MR environment and you could plug in, for example, translation, or you could plug in um, vision, so a HoloLens that can recognize what it's seeing with the cameras and actually give you some information that's worthwhile, or face API. Um, and actually one of the most popular ones which we worked on is uh, Lewis. Lewis, so okay. the language, language understanding. understanding. Yeah. So one of the challenges with mixed reality is that you don't have traditional input. So keyboard and mouse doesn't really make sense yeah. in an MR. So you've got controllers or simple gestures like tap or uh, gaze. Gaze, yeah. Um, or you can talk to it. But that's the trick, right? Yeah. So if you start thinking about what you can say, you could do keyword triggers and you could look for keywords, but that's not very natural. Like, I have to teach you exactly what you have to say in order to make something now, work. If you can do like an Iron Man Jarvis type experience, now that would blow my mind. Is that so, what you're trying to do? Kind of, yeah. Okay. I want to understand. So we, what we want to do is build an MR application that understands the intention behind your command okay. without having to care about the keywords that you're using. And so creating a scene or creating a world that you're in with virtual objects, real objects, and then being able to create commands that or understand intentions within that scene starts to give you this ability to do some interesting things. So this is a little Unity app, kind of hello world of Lewis. Make the cube green. I would like the cylinder to be blue. Make this bigger. Make that smaller. So it's getting my intention based on what I'm looking at. So and it takes the context from the direction you're facing and right. what you're looking at right now. Yeah. And so it can, you can give it a command based on the object, or you could give it a command based on what you're looking at. It understands this in this very simple scenario, changing colors and changing sizes mm -hmm. um, of objects in my scene. And so the longer you have it running, the more you put out there, the more you can retrain it, republish your Lewis model, it gets better. Um, and so this is a great way within a MR app to start creating um, intention-based commands rather than command worst commands. This is a sphere. This is objects that you've created inside of the scene. What if I'm wearing a whole lens and it's actual real life, real physical objects? Well, uh, yeah, obviously you can't change real physical objects. So you no, can, but you can see like, you can, what is what is Yes. That? So one of the things using the vision APIs is that you can start training for specific objects. So we've got some partners that we've been working with that are training a model using the vision APIs on Holo and HoloLens mm -hmm. uh, in an MR app to recognize things they care about in their world. So they can look at things, and it will actually automatically recognize that. So they're sending frames. Uh, on a repeating basis up for recognition. It'll recognize those objects and identify them. So if you're looking for a specific type of yeah. instrument or equipment within your space, then it will highlight those, identify those. So you could be the guinea pig on this. So cool. um, you can put the headset on. Uh, but what I'm going to do on my tablet here is start up another application where I can see exactly the same scene that you're looking at. So this scene is rendered from an Azure table. So there's a bunch of data in Azure that defines this scene. Now, obviously, okay. it's a very simple scene right now, and that's all good. Um, but Are you storing the actual assets in the table? So we're not storing the assets. We're, st we're storing um, properties of those assets okay. so that we can re-render them. So I can render that exact same scene down on my tablet. And then I can start, in on my tablet, I can start doing some things on that scene that will be reflected in your world. So okay. give it a few seconds to warm up. And if everything goes according to plan, there we go. Well, things are just starting moving on their own. Yep, that's me moving them. 
So I'm now moving the objects around in your world on my tablet. So on my tablet, I can see your scene. And I'm, if you want to flick your headset up, you can see I'm literally just moving things around on my screen. That is really using cool. Using touch. And that's reflected in your. Can I also see you where you are, the device you're holding? No, the no. So this is actually all being done you know, through the internet. Yeah. So you, you don't even have to be in the same room as me. We could have 15 different people carrying tablets. You could have 10 different yeah. people carrying headsets. And it's all synced up um, using notifications through Azure. Um, one of the nice things we've done is we've done this using the Azure Notification Hub. So you could actually do that. You could render this scene on an iPad or on an Android phone mm -hmm. and still see exactly the same scene. I could manipulate the scene on a different platform that you then see that scene represented. So it's very collaborative, be able to kind of like what we do with the whiteboard, we collaborate with right. places, you can do the same thing with yeah. the 3D scenes. Yeah, so cool. it's, it's kind of pulling together this whole um, story of multi-device, multi-user right. engagement in an MR So if I wanted scenario. to have like custom assets for this, I would still have to ship those assets with the app, but keep a reference of them into this app. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. Just tell them where you want to render these. Yeah, apps, and you right? could take that to the next level where you start putting assets up in the cloud too, right? Yeah. And the table just references which asset. If you don't have it locally, it pulls it, it down. Pulls it down. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is an intro to get you started thinking about what's possible um, and hopefully get people, you know, plugging their apps together so we get a more unified experience across different devices. This is really cool. Are, are Thank you. developers already using this? No. So this is stuff that, well, some are. <laughs> so we're just testing this out now with some early stage partners mm -hmm. um, to give them an idea of what's possible and seeing what they go and build. And then when we start getting some refinements on it so that we can actually feel comfortable publishing it, we'll mm -hmm. publish it out so that people can just grab it and okay. Build on it themselves. But if somebody wants to try this now, they just reach out to you. Then. Yeah, just reach okay. out to me. So one of the other things we've noticed, a lot of people want to um, plug video streams into MR scenarios, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes 360 video and sometimes um, you know, just a, a live feed of something yeah. that could just be like in a window in their environment. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we look at, we've been working on plugging the Azure media services that can do all kinds of clever things on the back end to, to stream the, to stream stream the video, video, to do live streaming management, to uh, you know, reassign to different codecs or to determine, oh, you know, I can see you're on a low bandwidth. I'm going to give you a different resolution, those mm -hmm. kind of things. So we're working on that. That's a, a, an interesting solution for a number of people. Um, and then the other thing which we've been working on is plugging full Azure machine learning systems endpoints okay. into uh, MR apps. So the one that we've got as a demo right now that we're working on and refining is a uh, lightweight virtual store in MR that you walk into. But the shelves are stocked based on the history of what people have bought before. So we have an ML algorithm that's looking at like a year or two years of uh, history of purchases and saying, oh, based on what we know gets purchased at this time of year or this time of day, whatever, I'm going to restock the virtual shelves right. with items that make sense for now. So uh, just walking as in a physical store and I go buy something, it's still a digital thing that I'm buying, it's but it's like in the VR world, it's physical. Yeah, oh, yeah. Cool. so we're giving you kind of a a virtual store to walk into that is, so this is still using AI Azure populated. ML, Azure machine learning. So it uses the Azure ML to determine how to populate the shelves. Okay. Can you have a HoloLens and a MR device talking to each other? Yeah, kind of absolutely. Thing? Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming all the way from Australia just to do this video. It, you're welcome. I was only in building 37, so it's not that. We could say you were in Australia. Oh, sorry. I came all the way from Australia, Nicola. I'm very thankful for you inviting me to come from Australia. Just, I'm going to go back and get on a plane now and fly home. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs>